guys. Let's go ahead and start. So come into Sukhasana, which most of you are already in. If you've got blankets, come seated on the top of your blankets. You can put those in a book bowl. And then once you sit in the center of the blankets, cross your legs at your mid shin. So mid shins line up with the very top edge of your mat. Center of your kneecaps also extend out towards the top of your mat. So think of that as coming from the inner growing to the inner knees. You see, inner growing out to the inner knees. And then lean over. As you lean over, really draw the foot and the outer ankle bone against the mat. Rotate the lower buttock flesh. So again, you go out and draw back. But use the weight from the foot. So again, as you're leaning over to adjust the left buttock flesh, really draw the outer left foot against the mat. Bring your fingertips outside of your hips to your blankets, your blocks, or your mat. Press down, keep your elbows bent, and we're really going to stretch the side rib cage up. So you're moving, think of moving your torso out of your weight. Keep your outer knees heavy, your outer feet heavy, and your outer hips moving towards your mat. Draw your abdominal wall back, your sacrum and your tailbone down. Bring your hands to your heart. Keep your chin parallel to the mat. Let's begin the ujjayi breathing. It's an audible inhalation, audible exhalation. You can focus your gaze again out in front of you on the mat or either at the tip of your nose. But momentarily keep your eyes open as you begin your ujjayi breath, audible. Fill the lungs like balloons on the inhalation. Empty the lungs completely with the exhalation. Close your eyes, continue to center yourselves using your breath. Inhalation moves deep into the outer rib cage, the back rib cage. And as you exhale the breath, try to keep the passivity in the muscles of the face. I'll chant Om, join in or just listen. Oh. Exhale the breath, bow your head by bringing your chin to the groove of your neck. Bring your hands to the tops of your legs, center your head and as you exhale the breath, open the eyes, release the hand. Let's do uh, Sukhasana forward fold. So I'm gonna come to the front edge of my blanket so that the lower buttock flesh is against the blanket. I'll bring my two blocks out in front of me. You don't necessarily have to have blocks. Bring your hands over the blocks if that's what you're using. Extend the index finger out towards the top of the block. Push down into the blocks and then push them out in front of you. Give some weight to the blocks from the hands. Once you get your blocks out here as far as you think you can, bring your fingers together. Press down into your blocks. Wiggle your fingers towards the very top edge of your blocks. Open the armpits, all four corners. Press down into the blocks as you inhale and look towards the top of the mat and exhale, grip over the blocks and bring them back towards you. Very good. So a lot of the work in that coming forward, guys, is coming from here. So a lot of the effort and the movement forward is extending the backs of your arms. Think of reaching out using starting that action coming from here, not necessarily here, your hands. So start that action from really lengthening the flesh on the backs of your arms. Let's uncross and recross. So again, adjust the buttock flesh. Draw the foot down against the mat as your anchor so that you can really adjust the flesh out and back. And you've crossed your legs opposite. I don't know if I said that, but if you need blocks again, bring them out in front of you. And if you don't, it would be this. You would walk out still using the backs of the upper arms. So as the hands are on the blocks, press down, push the blocks forward. Listen, guys, you will begin to feel the up, upper arms moving out towards your blocks. Keep your outer feet, your outer hips, 
and your outer uh, knees moving down. You can actually draw your outer feet against your mat and see if you can get more length in your spine. Bring your fingers together. Walk your fingertips towards the very top edge of your block. Take any hollowing out of the chest, any hollowing out of the abdominals. Good. Use your hands, guys. Push down into your block. Use that to move the breastbone up and away from the belly button. Good. Grip over the blocks. Give a good grip and pull them back towards you as you come seated. Very good. Extend the legs out in front of you and once more, just the flesh. And I'm going to use a strap here, but you guys can come to the very edge of your of your blankets with the lower buttock flesh. And what this does is it brings the lower buttock flesh in, bring the uh, sacrum in and up. And I'm going to take the strap in a small loop, just big enough for my wrist, outer wrist. So when I make it into a loop, guys, this is how you measure, bring it to the thumbs, bring it to the top of the chest. Once you get that, bring it out in front of you. Bring your hands, arms in, and you want to bring the strap to the outer wrist, the outer wrist, the outer wrist. But watch, so we won't start here, but move your spine in and up, and then move your torso forward. Extend your arms out. Break the loop with the outer wrist. Break the loop with the outer wrist. Take the arms up. Bring the feet down, the heels down, the leg bones down. The kneecaps come down and your femur bones go down. Guys, again, break the loop, break the loop. Draw out into the strap, good. Take a deep exhalation of the breath and lift the arms a little bit higher. So remember, focus here. Focus here at the backs of your upper arms, moving up towards your thumbs, good. Draw the abdominal wall back, bring the leg bones down and then exhale, release. Good, good, good. Don't hold the breath here, guys. Don't hold the breath, yeah. So you want to really take even breath. So again, we'll adjust the buttock flesh. And when you do that, watch the foot of the flesh that I'm adjusting. So this upper leg bone does this. It really hooks back into the hip socket here. And the same on the opposite side. And then you want to move in. You want to move your um, sacrum in, into your body. And again, I'll take the strap. This time I'll bring it right below the elbow joint. So it's not at the wrist anymore. It's right below the elbow joint. I'll press out. Now, when you lift the arms, it's gonna take more lift to take the strap away from the top of the head here. So it takes here. Really use your arms, use your hands, use your fingers, use your outer arms to draw out into the strap, out into the strap. Now the backs of your upper arms your triceps should extend up, 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 all the way up into your fingers. Draw out a little bit deeper, Dan. Draw out into the strap. See if your index fingers will touch the ceiling and your thumbs touch the floor. There you go. Good. Draw the arms a little bit further behind the ears, guys, and see how deep or how high you can lift the strap away from the top of your head. Good. Stretch up. Great. And exhale. Release. Perfect. Now, what we want to do is we want to keep that length as we move forward. So I just made my loop a little bit smaller. You can keep it as it is if you want. But this time I'm going to take the strap in the hands. I'm going to lift up and again, get that same length. I'll move forward, keeping the length. So I don't want to move forward like this. You see, there's already a shortage. There's no place for the torso to go. So again, we have to make sure lower buttock flesh is rotated out upper leg bones into the hip socket. Again, there's this lift up. So I'm gonna go from here to here. I'll wrap around the feet. Watch guys, lift up, no rounding, no hollowing. Here would be hollow. So you'll wanna bring your spine in and up and keep that action as you move forward. Widen the elbows out, not just out, but up and fold forward, okay? Hashimotanasana. Take the strap in the hand. Extend the arms out, take the arms up. And when you lift the arms up, extend through the inner wrist. Try to touch the ceiling with your inner wrist. Exhale, come forward, draw your heels down, your shin bones and your upper legs. Wrap your strap around your feet. 
hold close to your feet with your strap, your hands. So that's it. So Kelly, keep keeping your spine in as you're doing. Now begin to kind of walk your hands down the strap little by little. Good, good, good. You guys inhale, stretch up and exhale, fold. As you fold, take the elbows not only out to your sides, but see if you can lift them up towards the ceiling. And then maybe notice if you're getting some space in the front ribs and the back ribs. Elbows out and up, guys. See if you can touch the ceiling with the tips of the elbows. Great. And then inhale, stretch up. Keep the leg bones opposite towards your mat. And then exhale, release. Perfecto. Perfect. Perfect. And so I'm going to do this again. I'm gonna to come to the edge of the blanket with the lower buttock flesh and the legs together. Then I'll separate the legs, the feet, just watch for a moment. I'll bring myself into, I was gonna do it different, but I'll bring my legs into Sukhasana, just watch. And so again, I don't wanna be here, but I wanna move up and over, leg bones down, outer knees down, outer feet. Same thing, right? I'm gonna bring the right foot out, right leg out, do you see? And I want to keep this at a 90 degree angle. That shin bone is doing the exact same thing as it was in Sukhasana. I'll bring the outer right ankle bone to the inner knee. I'll sternally rotate the top of the upper right leg. Watch the outer right knee heavy. Move forward. So you've got to move forward in order for the knee to come into the inner foot. Not here, guys. So we want to move here. You have to move your torso forward. It's impossible to come forward like this. So the sit bones go towards the lower back. And then I'll come forward with the knees against the feet or the mat. Like this. Okay. So start in Sukhasana. Start in Sukhasana. The exact same Sukhasana from the beginning. Sit at the edge of your blankets. That's great. Sit at the edge of your blankets and then your outer legs and hips here go in towards your midline. And then once you get here, kind of shift forward so your outer feet and your outer knees come towards your mat. And then drag your right foot out, place the outer right ankle bone into the inner left knee. Again, make sure that the, the sits bones are not moving towards your knees, but rather towards your low back. That's it. Keep, that's great. Now, again, if your knee is elevated, if your outer right knee is elevated, do the L shape. Externally rotate with a little bit of weight, lean forward and see if that outer right knee will come into the inner left foot. That's great. That's great, that's great, that's great. And then if you can, come forward, no rounding, no hollowing in the abdominals, no hollowing in the chest. Keep the spine moving in, Think of the sits bones, guys. Think here at your sits bones, do this. Lift them up, lift them up and move them into your low back here, your sitting bones. You don't have to use your hands, but energetically draw up towards your low back. Good. And then walk the hands and torso back and we'll change sides. So to change sides, that was great. Think of ways to trick our brain into getting into this, right? So once you are here, you'll come back here. <laughs> that didn't work, huh? Okay, so here, not here, here. And then to do the adjustment that we do in the very beginning, we do this. We already give that external rotation. And then the left foot for me is already in front. I'm going to lean in and, and, and bring the hands underneath the outer foot and outer ankle bone, maybe the outer shin. I'll bring it up and place it to the inner right knee. Got an L shape. I'll lean L shape. Now as I'm rotating down, I want to go forward. Do you see? So here, forward. Let the outer knee come down. It should be heavy. Once you get here, sitting bones up towards the low back, you come forward. Keep the weight in your outer knees, both of them. Here, in your outer knee, draw down. Pretend that there's a weight, or maybe there's a, the, the, there's a magnet between that outer left knee and that inner right foot. So it goes down. Good. And then as you come forward, think sitting bones up and over into the low back. Sit bones up and over into the low back. So take any hollowing out of your front body and you'll ask, well, how do I do that? Push the floor with your hands and move your spine into your body. Good, good. 
sits bones go back. Perfecto. Perfecto. Walk the arms out as far as you can. Remember, sits bones go into your low back, especially the left one. And then come seated. Perfecto. Perfect. And then let's stretch our legs out. Stretch your legs out. And then you can again rotate the buttock flesh. Let's see if there's an easy, fun way to do this. There is. So what I'm going to do is take my hands behind me to the blankets. I'm at the front edge of the blanket. And then I'll lean back like I'm just having a good old time. And I'll take the legs up. And I'll cross the right knee over the left. Again, I'm, I'm having a good old time here. And then I'm going to draw the feet, inner feet towards me. Do you see this action of pulling the feet in like this? I'm not using the hands. I'm kind of just using them behind me onto the floor. And then I'll come forward. And when I come forward, I'll leave the feet out and the shin bones still kind of angled with uh, lined up with the top of the mat. And then I'll, as I come forward, I'll take the feet and kind of rotate tops of the feet down. And then I'll come forward. And then the fun disappeared. <laughs> okay, so remember, your feet are and your legs and your shins are out in front of you and they're lined up with the top of your mat. Once you get that, draw the outer right hip here down. So lean back, lift the feet, cross right over left, right over left. And then sitting bones go in the low back, shift forward, bring the feet down, good. Now, grab your feet, everyone, and this will be interesting. You'll feel this articulate in your upper leg bone, but turn the soles of your feet up to the ceiling. Use your hands to do that. That's it. Now, pull your feet out east and west, so kind of draw one foot out to the side and the other one out like this. So draw out. So if you're tightening maybe a, a rope. Again, this is not the pose, guys. Watch. But this, so get the feet out there, get the legs out there, turn the feet up, and it's still this action of up and over, up and over. The weight is in your outer knees once again, where it was a moment ago. Bring your outer top knee down and the bottom outer knee to your mat. Sits bones up and over, and then come up. Good, 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 good. Sits bones up and over. So remember, maybe showing from the back or showing from behind, this would not be the correct position to start. My sitting bones are going to my hamstrings. Watch, watch, watch. I can lift up and really pull, not just back, but up. You see? And then again, as you come forward, it's this action here. It moves all the way up through the back of the head. Do you see? So it doesn't stop. It really starts kind of here. So once you cross opposite, lean back, cross left over right, widen the legs, then come forward, bring the outer feet against the mat carefully. Make sure that the kneecaps are centered again top of your mat. And once you get that, you can reach down and grab your feet and literally roll them up towards the ceiling. And not only roll them up, but pull your feet out to the side. That's it, that's great. That's great. As you move forward, guys, sitting bones go up towards the low back and there's some, some breath. So take an exhalation as you try to deepen this movement forward. Use an exhalation. Draw your knees down, your outer knees, both of your outer knees, draw down. So they're weighted. And you can also bring that, the femur bones down at the top. Good, 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 good. Good, a few more seconds. Ah, perfect. And then come up, good. And then stretch your legs out. And then I'm gonna move my blankets over to the side and my strap, and I'll take Auto Mukha Varasana. So if you need child's pose, if you need a blanket, 
between your heels and your bottom, feel free. If this happens when you take um, Adho Mukha Varasana, then you definitely want something between your heels and your bottom so that your bottom is grounded the entire time, grounded, do you see? So you're pressing down against your heels, do you see? Your outer, upper leg bones are going down and back. And then we'll walk the arms out. Again, This we want to avoid any rounding here. We're still trying to stretch. So again, this is a place where, and if you don't need a blanket, bring your big toes together. Your knees are separated. And your knees are only separated far enough so that your outer or your side ribs fit inside of your inner knees. So, but there's still work to bring those leg bones down into or towards your shin bone. That's nice, guys. That's really nice. Think of, again, and I, I've been kind of harping on this, but it's your triceps. If you can get length in your triceps, that's nice, Aiden. <laughs> if you can get the, the, the uh, shoulder blades to move towards the hand, and to move away from the spine. Push with your hands to draw your bottom down. Press your heels with your bottom. Good. Good, 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 good. Exhale, bend the elbows and just let the elbows rest. So now you can rest in child's pose. Perfect. And then guys, go ahead and come up and we've done this one lately. You'll stay bottom half as you are, but you'll come seated. And what I'm gonna do is come hands and knees, take the big toes, base of the toe joints apart and just come onto my toes. And I wanna really press my heels back. And I'll walk the arms out and kind of push back and if you notice, the bottom doesn't come to the heels, but I get a nice deep stretch at the backs of the arms and armpits. And then I'll walk the arms over to the right, both of them, and I'll draw the sitting bones towards the heels. Ugh. And then I'll come from the center and go over. Notice the bottom is not touching the heels, and I want to draw down. The feet are separated. Oh, feels so good. Your feet are separate and you're on your 10 toes. Your heels are active, okay? Start in the center. Start by walking the arms down in front. You're on your 10 toes. Your bottom is elevated. Start to press your bottom towards your heels. Once you're in the center, you can walk both of your arms over to the right and then press your bottom towards your heels. Good. Especially that left sitting bone when your arms are to the right. Put a little weight in the left sitting bone as you draw it towards the heel. And then go opposite. So walk both of your hands and arms over to your left. And then as you draw your bottom towards your heels, you'll notice that the right sit bone feel, feels further away from the heel, yes? Right sitting bone will feel further away from the right heel bone. So I want you to really put a little weight in that right sit bone and try to get it towards the heel. Great. And then come back to the center. Turn the tops of the feet down. Bring the, so you'll come from here to here and back into just a restful child's pose. So that could be here or even here. Yeah. Just a restful child's pose before we move deeper. Come up. If you have your arms here resting as your side body, you can bring them back out in front. Lift the head and look towards the top of your mat. Come to your hands and come to your knees. Guys, here I want you to push the floor away from you with lots of weight. Lots of weight into the mat coming from your hands, especially the knuckles of your fingers. And then I will take the toes down Again, come here and I'll press up. I'm gonna start with bent knees. So the 
this is watch your weight goes back so really take that exact action here of getting length in your arms once you get this draw the belly button towards the spine straighten the knees and you can start with your hands and arms and feet and legs a little bit wider than normal. You can also, when you lift up, keep the knees bent, draw the inner knees towards the back body and press your chest into your upper leg. That's it, move the chest. That's great. Now, Mr. Inger, he, he, in, in his anatomy books, he says, listen, you have to compress the bone with the muscle. Use the muscle to compress. So draw the muscle into the bone and straighten the arms. The shoulder blades still move. They move towards your hands here. Good. Keep your head lifted so it's in line with your upper arms. And your femur bones moving back. Perfect. And then exhale, come down and rest any way you want. So again, elbows bent or just kneeling on your mat or whatever is comfortable for you. Perfect. And then go ahead and we'll come into another dog pose. And I think we did this yesterday. So let's come hands and knees. And I've got a block. It's, I'm not going to, sometimes we use the block for the forehead, but I'm just going to bring the block to the upper leg. And I want to draw into the block and I'll turn this direction because the action of this block between the upper legs is to do this, to draw the inner thighs in like this, that's the action. And so I'll come here, I'll squeeze that block, lift the knees up, and I wanna really try to press this block back. Also wanna squeeze that block. Okay, so let's try it. So I put it on whatever level that you feel like is doable. I had it on the flat level, but you could also do that, which is a little bit wider, okay? block to the upper legs place the block there as you've got your hands and your knees on your mat and then you can one hand and press that block back as you squeeze it so it goes back and then lift up lift the knees now draw the block back if you have the flexibility to move one hand off the mat and push the block back with that one hand Follow the directions of that block as you do that. Rotate the inner thighs in and back. Good. Now you want to descend your calves. So your lower legs, your calf muscles descend. They go down and your hamstrings go up. Your sits bones roll into your low back. A few more seconds. Perfect. Perfect. And then release. Just come down to kneeling. Maybe bring your block just put your block down to the side and let's see. And then maybe grab your other block, your second block guys, and we'll come standing. So I'm gonna put them out in front of me, step up one foot at a time. I'll bring that foot to the outer block. I mean, outer foot to the block. Take the outer ankle bones and try to move them towards the block. And then I'm gonna grab the elbows like this. And instead of this, I wanna go forward and begin to let the tips of the elbows move towards the mat. So guys, listen, what we're working, it's not this, you see? So the side, there needs to, it, all of the hollowing needs to come out. How will it do that? It's coming from here. Just watch for a moment. So if you feel like you're like this, watch. Sits bones out, 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 and then length shift forward so start here start with the internal action of your legs so your feet when you come up step to the outer 
outer feet to your blocks, outer feet to your blocks to start. And then take your inner ankle bones and draw out to the block. So Daniel, start with your feet, your outer feet touching your block, whether they be high or low. So your feet are not together. They're a good distance apart so that you can gain that space at the posterior pelvis. You guys stay here for a moment before you grab the elbows and you can draw the inner ankle bones towards your blocks. You can rock front to back so that you get grounding in all four corners of your feet. Once you get here, spread your sitting bones and then grab your elbows. Put weight in your hands, drop your elbows towards or pull them towards the floor. So the more you can get the back of your waist to open up, the more space you're going to find in your spine. Shift your weight forward, grab your elbows, touch the floor with the tips of your elbows. Lean into the front of your feet. Remember, keep your inner ankle bones moving towards your block. Switch the way you hold the elbows and then see if you can use them to get length in your side ribs, upper arms and earlobes line up or ears. Good, good. Everyone shift just slightly forward. Great. A few more seconds. Good. And then release the elbows. Put your hands on your blocks, which are still outside of your feet. Inhale and look out in front of you. Really straighten your spine here, guys. Remember, there's still that sits bones out. Hands to your hips. Be solid on all four corners of your feet. Not here, but here and then slowly come up. Ah, very, very, very good, guys. And then you can release. So, and one that we've been doing a lot of, and let's see how I wanna do this, um, lately is trikonasana. So what I think I'm gonna do is just use a wall for the back foot, just that. So if you don't have one, it's okay. But I'm gonna take the left outer heel. I'm gonna turn the left toes in and place that heel to the wall, just like that. And then I'll turn my right toes to the right and walk my right leg out. Now the point in using this wall is so that I don't do this and reach all the way away from the wall with my left leg. I wanna draw that outer ankle bone, you guys watch. I wanna lift the arch of the left foot and rotate the outer left heel to the wall. Do you see how that lifted the leg. So here would be nothing, left side. Here would be lifting the inner leg and drawing the outer leg towards the wall and behind me. So I'll take the arms out. And when you do that, left arm may touch the wall and be higher. Bring the bottom in. I'll try to bring the sits bones towards the wall as I lean over to the right. This block will be as high as you need it. I'll look at my right foot roll my inner right foot down into my mat, take my outer hip in and back towards the wall, and then take the top arm up, okay? So left heel to the wall, the outer heel only. Your left foot is at a 90 degree angle. Left toes are at a 90 degree angle. So Dan, come up for a moment. Walk your, turn your right toes right, right kneecap right, then walk your right leg further out to the right. We wanna have some space at our leg. Now everyone kick the wall down with your left outer heel, take your arms out. So your left arm may be higher up. Now reach out or reach into your right arm and lean to your right, bring your bottom in. Bottom in, bottom in, bottom in. Everyone bottom comes forward. One more time, bottom forward, torso back. Take an invisible wall behind you and everyone lean the center of your head to your invisible wall. Center of the back of your head to your invisible wall. Good. Take your top arm up, Aiden, that's nice. Top arm up, good. Rotate your chest towards the ceiling. Good. Look down at your right toes and come up. Use your left arm to kind of swing yourselves up. 
Good. And then release, and we'll do the other side. So guys, watch, watch from behind. And actually, this is not, this is my bad side, but this leg, outer leg keeps moving towards the wall. Do you see? And the bottom goes in. And this is where we're kind of coming forward like this, torso leaning in front of the hips. We want the hips and the uh, torso lined up. So you guys watch, so work here, work here, bottom in and back, back, back. That side rib stays turned forward. Bottom side rib, which is your left side rib turned forward. You bring your left side rib away from your spine here, okay? So go really slowly and use the wall. If you're using one, if you're not, it's invisible. So switch. Left outer heel comes to the wall, left toes about 90, um, at a 90 degree angle, or wait, 45 angle on your back foot. Yeah, there you go. Left toes to the left, left knee to the left, have some space between the legs. Press the wall with the outer right heel and lean over to your left. When you're leaning over, keep your bottom in, bottom in, press it forward. Take the torso back, bring the left hand down. It can go down the shin or it can go to your block. That's it. It can, that's great. That's it, that's it, that's it. That block can be whatever level that you want. So Katie, bring your left arm behind you, behind your ankle if you can, left arm, bottom arm. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Now, bottom forward, torso back, except don't fall down the stairs. There you go, great. You guys could take your top arm up, open your breastbone by lifting your right arm up. Nice. And exhale, look down, come up. Very, very, very good. Let's see if we could do this another way. What was that? Okay, y'all watch. I have to figure these things out. So if you, I'm going to do another trick on us and I'm using a block to the hand. But if you notice, the legs are pretty good distance, right? So when I take my arms out, I want the ankles and the wrists to kind of line up together, like the wrist bones under the ankles. Y'all watch, watch. Then I'm going to turn the actually left heel to the left, right toes to the right. And I think we've done this one. So I'll go up with that right arm and I'm pressing up with the wrist here, I'm pressing up, pressing up, it's right to the ear. And then as I lean over, I'm gonna flatten that palm. So as I'm going over, the palm becomes flat, you see? And then I'll take the top arm over and try to squeeze the block, chest up. Okay, so you got to go slow with that, guys. You've got to go pretty slow. You can't go quickly with that. So left heel out to the left, right toes to your right. Good distance between your feet. Good distance between your feet. Stay here. Start with the block and the right arm up like you're serving a, a dinner tray or I don't know. No, start up right next to the ear on your right hand and press up, press up. You're holding the service tray. Yeah, press up though. Use that wrist to stretch up, arm to the ear. Right toes to the right. Begin, bring your left hand to your hip. Begin to bring your right arm down. Hold the block, lean to your right, hold the block. Come about halfway. Take your left arm up, bring it over your head. You've got to make the arm long. Press into the block, both hands. Press, press, press. Turn the chest up. So everyone take that left outer rib and rotate it behind you, bottom in. And then lift up, nice. Nice, and release, perfect. And switch sides, switch sides. 
So again, you start, and the idea of this, so your right heel's out, left toes are left, but the idea is you're getting right here, watch. This isn't supposed to change this length here. It should stay long, just like that. So even though we're going here, we're going sideways, but we're trying to keep that. We're not, we don't want to get here. Keep extending out towards the block. So start with it to the ear. It's opposite. We're going the opposite direction. Right heel out, left toes left. Hand, um, uh, left hand is holding your block. First, take it up where you've got that arm to the ear. You're pressing up like you're serving the dinner tray. Press up. That's it. Bring it right to your ear, Dan. Right to your ear. So touching the ear with the arm. Fingers are kind of turned out to the left. And then start to lean over. Open the, the wrist as you lean over. And reach out. Use that block to lengthen the left side. Take the right arm up. It can go over the head. Squeeze the block. That's nice. Turn your chest up to the ceiling, guys. Chest up, chest up. Nice. And come up. That was great. That was excellent. Excellent. And so what I think I'm going to do is do a little bit of an Ardha Chandrasana, but kind of slow, and then we'll come down to, um, to the mat. So let's see. It is harder when it's slow. So when I come here, actually, I'm going to bend the right knee. I've got the block in the right hand. I'm going to bring the, the block kind of out to the outer edge of my mat to the right. You see, it's pretty good distance. I want it at an angle out to the right. And then I'll bend the right knee here and I'll drag the left toes forward. And then I'll lift the left leg again, not quickly. May have to adjust that block, bring it a little further out and to the right. Press the hand, turn the hips open, not here, move here to here. Okay. So another one that we go slow because if the hips um, become un, um, out of alignment, then it's hard to balance, right? So <clears throat> take the, the legs, the feet, separate them. Left toes left, right toes right, blocks in your right hand. Take your right arm up. Right, just like you did with the block, and we probably could use the block like that too. And then bend your right knee. And then lean over, put your right hand on your block or bring your block down in front of your right toes out to the right. Drag your left heel towards your, your left toes towards your right toes. And take your left leg up, make your left leg active, active. Active is the left leg, it's firm. Now press your outer right hip back. Good, good, good. Turn your chest up. If you could take your left arm up, take your left arm up. If not, keep your left hand on your hip. Good, 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 good. And then release. Bend the knee and come back down. Good. I think, guys, and this is where um, I kind of talked about the hip, but... It is easy. So here, and when the block comes down, try to bring it out to the left, but watch the back heel. That's the tough part. You want to keep your left toes, left knee to your left, because once they turn, the hip rotation changes. So we still want an external. And that back leg fits. And really, you're using this leg and outer hip to place your weight, you see? So focus on your standing leg and how much um, engagement and how firm the legs are. Okay, so go opposite. 
and then we'll do it just without anything. Okay, so left toes left, right heel out, bend the left knee, shift your weight over, drag your right toes towards your left heel, bring your right leg up. So your left hand is down on your block, which is out left of your left foot. Good. The further out to the left, the more balance. Keep that in mind. Nice, Kelly. The further out to the left, the better you will balance here. Nice. Nice. If you can, you'll take the top arm up. Nice, Sarah. Nice, 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 nice. Great. And then release. Come down, release. Perfecto. Perfect. Excelente. Okay. And, you know, there's a saying, I think Gita Yengar says that it's easier, the or she said, it's easier the quicker that you come into it. So what I'm going to do is put the block to the right of my mat, and I'll step or jump my feet apart, turn the left toes out, right toes to the right. Right. And then instead of doing it nice and slow, I'm going to take the arms out and literally kind of swing. You see, so. Yeah, just kind of swing into it like you'll throw your back leg up and you'll press down through your hand. Good, 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 good. Let's do that two times on that right side and then we'll switch. Nice. That's great, guys. Twice on the right and twice on the left. If you need a block, use it. If you don't, use your fingertips on the mat. But that quicker movement sometimes like the seesaw. That's it, Katie. Nice. Nice, guys. Really, really nice. Twice on each side. Nice. And it's fun. <laughs> Perfect, though. And then we go ahead and release, guys. You can go ahead. Perfect, though. And release. So I'm going to take my blocks again. Right, and this is a kind of a tough way to do it, but let's try it. We'll do it two different ways. So if you think this is tough, just wait, just kidding. That's not what I meant to say. What I meant to say was, if you think the way that we're gonna do it first is tough, we'll do it an easier way in a, in a little bit, the second time. So I'm gonna take my blocks underneath my hands and I'm gonna take a dog pose. And I wanna keep getting those feet back and get a nice deep pose. I'll shift my weight into my hands forward and I'll bring that outer left ankle bone right over the top of outer, outer right ankle bone over the top of the left knee. Why? I need to keep my weight in my hands. I'll begin to let that right shin bone, outer right foot and outer right knee come forward and down. I'm still using the block. I'm not immediately falling over onto my right hip, but watch my left leg. My right toes are kind of hooked around the block to the left. Watch my back leg, my left leg. We don't want to do this, guys. So, and you want very light weight. Think about your hip here, forward, especially the left one. So how did I do that again, you asked? <laughs> no one asked, oh, but I'll tell you. So blocks in the hands and dog pose. Blocks in the hands is, is another one where I think I'm tricking my brain. So blocks in the hands and press back, press your chest towards your legs. That's great, guys. Get a nice, deep, long dog pose. Now look towards the top of your mat, shift yourselves forward. So put your weight in your hands, kind of come to your tippy toes. Lift your right foot and cross your outer right ankle bone before uh, over your left knee. Keep weight in your hands, keep your torso forward. Let your outer right ankle go, bone come away from your 
upper left leg and bring your outer right foot down. Kind of hook your toes around the block to your left. Wiggle your left leg back. Wiggle your left leg back. You can let your right knee go forward and go back, but really glide or slide your left leg back. Come seated. Don't lean to your right, guys. There's no weight on your right sit bone. No weight on your right sit bone. Push your hands into your blocks. Everyone lift your right sitting bone off of your mat and move your weight to your left. Is your left hip point pointed forward? That's great, that's great, that's great. Is your left hip bone, that's it, um, Laurel. I don't know, I was about to call you some other name, Stacy. I don't even know a Stacy. There you go. Now, Katie, do me a favor and come onto your left toes. Bring your left toe, that's it. Now you go, now bring the top of the left foot down. And, and Kelly, if you possibly can come on your left toes too. I know, I'm, I'm going a little crazy here. Now, now take your, or kind of move your weight back. Be on your left toes, lift your left knee and just move. I say that's perfecto. That's excelente. Okay, and come back to dog pose. So watch, we're here. And see if we can get back to dog pose. How do you do that? Left toes down, weight in your hands. Put your weight in, that's it. Oh, so nice, guys. Weight in your hands, chest moving back. Now look towards the top of your mat, shift forward. Shift your weight forward, weight in your hands, cross your outer left ankle bone over the top of your right knee, have contact, have contact, don't come forward yet, have contact. And keeping your weight in your hands, come forward, place the outer left ankle bone on the mat, and you can kind of wrap those toes around the block that's to your right, left toes. There you go, Aiden, that's great. Now kind of really, you add so good. Oh gosh, I'm getting so excited. I need water and a fan, a chocolate bar. Just kidding, I don't need a chocolate bar. I do need a chocolate bar. Now, the left sitting bone is away from your mat, Kelly. That's great, that's excellent. Now, your right leg is what is behind you. And so what I want us to do, we've got these toes hooked over. I want us to come to your uh, right toes, lift your right knee, kind of press your right heel back, and then reground the top of your right leg. Push your weight over to your right, everyone, thinking of using that outer right hip outer right hip turn down towards the floor. Great, 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 great. No weight on the sitting bones, good. And then we'll see if we can come out of this. And you say how, push down, bring your right toes down, come back and come out or come into Dog pose. And then go ahead and come down to release. Perfect. Take your blankets and we'll do one and not two. I think two makes it a little bit hard. I think the more blankets you have, anyway, I don't know. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna turn this way so that you guys can really notice the back leg. So I've got the blanket in the front and I'm gonna sit in front of it and I'm gonna do pinwheel. So right leg on the blanket, watch the left leg, left leg here. And then I wanna even this out. You see, kinda of wanna open up the back of this right knee. How do I do that? Move your weight back. Do you see now it's a little more at a 90 degree angle and there's space here. 
And then this side, I don't want to start like this, but I want to lift up and reach out into that left knee and lean to the left. And then I'll L shape and I'll draw down. And as I draw down, I'll come forward. Again, adjusting the whole way here. And then I'm here, start to bring that left leg back, but I've got to lift my whole bottom up and back and then come down. Remember, you started this rotation on your back leg. It, can, it started here. It started here. And it can actually stay there if you want to use your left hand to get that one. Damn. Okay, so blanket in front and come into pinwheel. So that's the right leg crossed onto the blanket and the back leg back at that 90 angle. And this to me is, it's tough. It is a tough, it's tough. You feel that internal rotation, yes? <clears throat> that's it. So Kelly, bring your left foot a little bit more to the left, just kind of wiggle it out to the left. Your back, that's perfecto. Your little dog is like, don't do it. Don't do it, mama. <laughs> this little dog's so cute, look. <laughs> He's kind of like, I'm, I'm watching you because I'm thinking this isn't looking right. <laughs> He's like, are you okay? Okay, so. <laughs> Now, watch, guys. Don't go forward yet. But what I want us to do is lift. Everyone bring your inner left foot down and lift your inner left knee up. You're using that foot. Now, reach the inner left thigh out towards the inner left knee and bring the knee down. Lift your right sit bone up and take it back. Bring your left hand to the upper leg. Rotate down. Lean forward. That left side goes Guys, don't, let, don't lean forward here. Your left side, the back of the left ribcage, rotates down towards your right heel. Now begin to wiggle that left leg behind you. Lift your right sit bone up. Roll or draw the right sitting bone back and come down. Yeah. I tricked y'all, just kidding. <laughs> Joan said, you tricked me. See, Kelly's dog this morning, there is like, yeah, I think I've seen this before. <laughs> That's it, everyone lean to your left. Remember, internal rotation on your left leg. Internal rotation, that's it, Katie. That's it, that's it, that's it. Now, Aiden, can you bring your left toes to the mat? Yeah, just put your left toes on. No, no, like on top of, yeah. Now, roll your left heel to the left, like this. Roll it out to the left. That. Now come down. Good, good. And then we'll release. How do we release? Y'all probably already released by the time I figure out how. We're going to try to come back to pinwheel. Oh, oh, oh. And then switch. No, well, that was fun. Did that work? The brain, did the brain know what was happening? Yes? No? Yeah, kind of. I think we've done this before. So you, some of our brains are no longer trickable when it comes to this. Ah, there you go. Back leg now, right leg in pinwheel. And that's tough, guys. So if you, if you notice, and I'm gonna face the backside to the camera, but look, if you, if you notice that sit bone, it doesn't go down, right? It can, but you would be doing an external rotation instead of an intern. So internal, think of this, rolling in. And then bring your inner right foot down, lift your knee and extend out. Lift your left hip up, keep your foot grounded and pull your outer left hip, this part back. 
kind of moves at that angle towards your back heel. Can you guys see? So outer left hip moves at an angle this direction towards my back foot like that. So instead of it coming forward, it would do this. It would go back and it would angle down that direction. And then L shape, draw down, lean forward. When you're doing that, the right side of your spine should rotate towards your left foot. And then you can begin to wiggle that right leg behind you. Once it gets so far, you've got to change your position. Come up to your hands, lift your left sitting bone up. And then you'll really kind of use that to roll to the right. So this hip does this, that back hip. And if you can, can even use your own hand to open up the lower buttock flesh right side, right side. It's internal. Nice. That's it. Yeah, so Katie, just lift that left hip, a sit bone all the way up. That's great. That's it. That. So there's no weight on your, on your left sitting bone. Your weight is really even across the back of your waist. Good. Just a few more seconds. Just like two more seconds. Good. Good. And then release. Nice. And sit. I don't know where all our time went, but what I'm gonna do is I've got this little blanket um, that I had for, for pigeon, and I'm gonna bring this to the inner knees like this. And then I'm gonna start by taking the knees over to the right. I'm gonna squeeze that block. Actually, it should go opposite, but watch. And so then once I get my knees over to the side, I wanna lift the shoulder blades and line the breastbone up with the ceiling. And then my, most of my work is gonna be trying to bring that left side back against the mat. Now watch, I'm gonna stay here for a moment. And then I'm gonna lift up, got the left shoulder, left the head up, and I'm gonna take this left hand and kind of press it out beyond the right, just like that. And then I'm gonna swing back. And when I swing back, I wanna open up the shoulder blades. Come over, go past, swing back. Shoulder blade spread. And go out, come back, spread the shoulder blades, just like that. And then we'll come up and switch. So once, when you come supine, bring your blanket inside of your inner knees and instead of taking your knees to the right, we'll take our knees to the left. Take your knees to the left and then squeeze the blanket. Stay there for a moment and see if you can line your breastbone up with the ceiling. Or think of this, bend both of your elbows and put the backs of your arms on your mat. Lift your left shoulder blade up and take it out to the left and see if that lines your breastbone up a little bit more. So think about shoulders spreading. Bring the knees close to the chest and draw the inner knees into the blanket. Lift up, so you've got your arms extended out. Lift the right side of your body up and take your palm of your right hand, kind of glide it across your left palm, but take your right hand out further than your left and then swing back. When you swing back, make sure the shoulder blades are moving away from the spine. Do that three times on that side. It feels pretty good. Let's do it four times. So you lift up, reach out. And when you rotate back to your mat, left shoulder blade has to move away from the spine. That's it. Good, good, good. Focus on the left shoulder blade moving away from the spine as you reground your backside. Good. And once you've done that four times on that side, you'll bring it up and take your knees over to the right. Good. It's kind of like a rotating twist. Feels great. Stabilizing the hips by using the blanket. 
Notice the hips aren't going to keep lifting up with you. This is all about the spine. So once you lift up and go past the palm that's on the mat, make sure when you're rotating back, now your right shoulder blade needs to really move away from your spine. Good, good. That's it. Squeeze the blanket as you turn the chest back up to the ceiling. Really put a lot of weight in the inner. That's great, guys. There you go. And then once you get done with that, bring yourself back to the center. And I just want to do... You could put your feet on the mat, guys, but I want you to really squeeze that blanket. Hold your mat with your hands, kind of grip your outer mat. Press your feet, lift and tuck. Lift and tuck. Bring your knees up. I'm still holding that uh, mat with my hands, kind of drawing down. I want to keep a lot of space in my lower back. And then one more time, I'm going to let my knees go to the left left shoulder blade to the left and I'll twist to the right. I'm just gonna hold you. What you can do is take your left hand and draw that right knee down, draw it down, draw it down. So that left hand bringing the right knee down. Now see if you can kind of pull the right knee a little bit to the left, twist more to the right. You're in a supine twist guys. And this is the best way uh, to, to lie down if you're going to lie on your side, looking for opening your lower back, something between your knees. So as you're here and you've got your knees over to your left, you can draw that left hand into the right knee. Notice the space at the lower back. Notice the spreading around the sacrum. Bring the knees up. Try to squeeze the inner knees into the blanket. Squeeze. Take it over to the right. All the way down. Right hand, outer knee, draw down. Squeeze the blanket. And then lift the right shoulder blade. Take it to the right. Twist. Squeeze the blanket, guys. Really draw into the blanket, especially with the inner left knee. Hold the knee down. Kind of extend the left knee out. You can even rotate your outer left hip away from you. And then bring it back to the center. Place your feet on your mat. And you can actually take your, your blanket away and feet on the mat. Lift and tuck. Can even bring the inner knees together if you'd like for a moment here. And then let's bring our feet and knees up and roll over to your right and bring yourselves up. Perfect. So let's do Urdhva Dhanurasana. I'm gonna do two blocks against the wall and, you know, I've, I've kind of been working again on doing it just on the mat. Like, I, I hadn't done that in so many years. Um, but just this is kind of where I first started. Just putting the hands here, kind of using my opposite hand to draw in. See, now watch. As I do this, again, this is where I'm working. And I'll press the heel of the hands to get the elbows to move towards one another. Then I'm going to see if I can just press up onto the top of the head. Elbows in. And then maybe press. Okay. So that, that's what I'm working on. That's not what you guys have to be working on. You see, you could also do it with your hands on your blocks, which is easier for me. Head between the blocks, blocks in really close to the head, like this. And then hands on the block, same pose, except now I've got more height underneath my hands, making my arms a little bit longer. But you could still do that same thing, starting here 
and then working your way up. Okay, so let's do two back bends, the best of your abilities. <sighs> if you're using the blocks, um, there you go. That's it, Katie. Maybe scoop back a little bit closer to the wall, Katie, with your head. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Tuck your elbows in, Katie. Good. <laughs> Yeah, even out your inner feet if you can. Next time. That was excellent. Next time. That was perfect. Yeah. I think sometimes when we go into back bends, we lose the elbows or we lose the, the feet, the knees. So remember, the feet stay very even, and it's hard because that's almost automatic that they go out. But it, excellent, excellent, Laurel. Let's see, Sarah, do stay there, Sarah, but Sarah, can you move your hands just a little further away from your head? I think they're a little bit too close. Yeah, maybe move them out to the side a little bit deeper, just, to, that's great. Now pull your elbows in and try to feel the heel of your hands, that's great. Now try it, push your chest up. Good, 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 nice. There you go. I'm so, look at Kelly, I'm getting so excited today. I don't know what to do. Perfect guys, that's so good. Listen, now just listen, you don't have to repeat this, but if you are using block, to the wall, right? And it seems almost unnatural, but your head is directly between these two blocks. And my the top of my head is touching the wall. And then if you, even if you didn't come up, you could roll in and do you see, watch. And so Sarah, watch this part. As I press the hands and I roll the elbows, watch what happens here at the breastbone. You see, so the chest, the back body comes up. So when you're in a back bend, I think you start, you lift the hips, but, but the focus is on where the chest, the chest has to come up, you see? So it's almost like you're pulling from the breastbone to the ceiling, okay. And so, yeah, if y'all wanna try one more, you can, that's it. Kelly, pull those real close to your ears. There you go. And use the heel of your hands, kind of pull your elbows towards each other. That's it. That's nice, Kelly. There you go. Look at there. Very good. Okay. That's it, guys. If you're done, you're done. Perfect. Roll up. So even if you had your head uh, using your box, head between your box, see if you can roll up and just come forward in a posse, kind of a rounded posse. Even if you just let your hands glide down your shins and then you're here. Just try to release the back some. So a little bit of rounding. You can be a little bit hollow here in the abdominal. Yeah, there you go, guys. That's it. Perfect. And then come up. So you can kind of roll up one vertebra at a time. And let's take our inversion. And I know that sometimes your inversions can be another way to release your back, even whether that's handstand. Handstand's a great way to release the back. Legs up the wall can also release the back or sure soften it. Right, so guys, what I want you guys, if you're gonna do legs up the wall, that's perfectly fine. You can use that as your inversion or you could do hand or headstand or whatever other inversion you want. Maybe you wanna do legs in the chair. I know Sarah likes to do um, chair um, shoulder stand sometimes. So whatever equipment you have and whatever your favorite inversion is, 
let's take that for a little bit. Okay. If you cannot invert today, another great pose is sitting on your mat, maybe Baddha Konasana. Like that. That's if you can't invert. Remember, legs up the wall is an inversion. Yeah, Hannah, that looks so good. Good, 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 good. Laurel, that looks good. I thought that you were going to be using the ropes, but you weren't. There you go. Good. Yeah. If you did headstand or handstand and you're done, you can release your neck like this. You can also do child's pose. Or if you've done headstand and you're done, you're out of it, you can go in the legs up the wall as well and just kind of wait for everyone else. Or you can stay and release your neck. So Dan, turn your big toes in towards each other. There you go. There you go. There you go. Rest. If you're out of your inversion, Legs up the wall, stay there, but any other inversion that you're out of, you want to release the neck, the head, the arms, the shoulders. You can also come to legs up the wall, those of you who weren't there a moment ago. <coughs> Good, 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 good. Excellent. And then guys, go ahead and come out or down. So if your legs up the wall, slowly bend the knees, push the feet into the wall to kind of push away some, roll to the right, come up. And I'm gonna keep my blanket and a strap and I'm gonna keep the wall because I'm gonna keep my feet against the wall. If you don't happen to have a wall, uh, nearby, don't worry, just do it without. But here, I've got both of my feet to the wall. I've got a folded blanket to the outer right hip. I'm going to come down, feet are still against the wall. I'll push into the wall to straighten the knees. That's where I'll be. Abdominal wall down. And then y'all know Supta Pot, I'll go here. When I go out to the side, watch where the top of the leg, which is here, goes. So you could do this, right? When you come here, you can use your hand and watch, go, go here. So again, we're getting the top of that right leg against our blanket, like that. Keep working to ground your left side. So watch, when my right leg goes too far down, my left side comes up. I'll let my right foot come up, reground my left side, and then try that again, okay? So start with your right leg straight up, not out to the side yet, but in Supta Padangusasana 1. Yeah, that's it, that's it, guys. And here, think, remember your femur bone, that's your thigh bone, it goes to the back of your leg. And when you can bring that femur bone to the back of your leg, you feel like the buttock flesh on the right side opens up, it gets longer. That's it. Hold your strap right above your right kneecap, draw back, press away from you right above your knee. That's it, Sarah. Draw your outer right hip away from you. It moves towards your inner left heel. Reach up, grab your strap with your right hand, turn your right toes right, right kneecap to the right, take your right leg out. So again, go up and over that, that blanket or block, right leg to the right. Now, if your left leg came, came up at all, or your outer left hip, 
Let your right leg lift up, reground your left side, and then take your right leg out again. That's it. That's it. We're, we want to keep all of our weight in that outer left hip, outer left hip and outer back rib, left back rib. You can bend your right elbow, bring the back of your right arm down. Good. Bring your right leg up and take your right, the strap with your left hand. Take your right leg to the left. Go really slowly. Keep that femur bone to the back of the leg. That's it. So Katie, with your right heel, pretend you're gonna kick the wall. There you go. That's great. That's great. All the way over guys, make sure your left toes are straight up to the ceiling. There you go, Kelly. Good, good. And then bring the right leg back. Pull the leg into the chest. And then release. Rest a second, maybe change your block or your blanket to your left outer hip. Take your left leg up. Put your strap around your left foot. Now see if you can really close the back of your right leg to your mat. See if you can close the back of your right leg all the way to your mat. So there would be no space there. There would be no space underneath the back of your right leg. That's it. That's it. That's perfect. Now, turn your left toes left and your left knee to the left, left knee cap, and take your left leg out and you go up and over that blanket. Good. Notice what happens with the right side. Did you open up space on the back of your right leg? More than likely, yes. Let's see if we can close that space. So let the left leg come up a little bit, reground the right leg, and then left leg out again. There. We can feel the difference when we really work to ground opposite of the left side. Yes, perfect. Now it is an external rotation. Try to get those left toes to rotate down towards the mat. Good. And then bring this leg up slowly. Switch the hand that holds the strap. Take your um, left leg over to the right. Let's really compact your hips. Think compact, hips really firm to one another, like uh, coming to your midline. Yeah, that's great. Use those right toes, right foot. Press through your right foot. See if you can kick your wall over with your right foot as you let your left leg go over. That's great. That's great. Now, right above your left kneecap, move it back away from you. That's great. Go a little bit deeper. You can bend the right elbow. That will bring the leg over deeper. Wonderful. And then bring this leg back to the center. Hold it up for a moment. You can even pull it in. And then release. Okay, so keep your straps. One last one, and then we'll take Shavasana. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this blanket over to the left. It's my flat blanket. I may even double it up, right? And I'm grounded, and that blanket's right out to my left hip. I take the strap around the right leg. I'm going to keep this left hip moving away from my blanket that's to my left. So... Listen, watch, guys, you don't want to do this. But again, that blanket, and it's here. It's right outside of the left hip. So watch, when I go over, I'm not going to roll over onto this blanket. I'm actually going to keep that hip, left hip tucked away from that blanket. So we want to keep this hip in as I move over. So bring your block. It can even be a block to your outer left hip. Pull it in really close to your left hip. And then take your strap around your right foot. Take your right leg up. Yeah. 
Now, go ahead and take your right, your left hand and grab your yoga strap, left hand. Bring your hand up real close to your foot. Take it to your foot. Now, take your right leg to the left, but keep that left hip pulling away, pulling in, away from your prop, in and away from your prop. Tuck it away from your prop, that's it. One more time, tuck away from your prop with your left hip, roll it more towards your midline. Bend your left elbow, see if that will help. Take the right leg over more, bend the elbow, good. Tuck the hip in guys, let's keep that left hip tucked in. Great, tucked in, tucked in, away from the prop. And then bring the leg back and switch, perfect. Perfect. Several different ways to do this one, but doing it this way kind of uh, emphasizes the compactedness of the hips and the spreading here. Remember, so it would be instead of this, it's more like you're crossing your legs, which would be that not that you see so you're still trying to get and that's exactly what you're doing you're crossing this leg over in order to open up here okay so go opposite the blanket moves opposite um belt around the left foot once you get that grab your strap with your right hand take your left leg over to the right remember tuck your hip away from your prop that's the idea is to compact compact that's it left leg going over to the right and compact the hips, tuck them in. Try to almost squeeze them into one another. And right, ab right uh, above your left kneecap, move that space away from you. Right above your left kneecap, open it up. Great, great. Okay, bring the leg back and we can release. And then let's take Shavasana any way you want to. So if you want to go legs up the wall, legs in the chair, uh, if you just want to stay as you are, that's fine. Maybe just uh, uh, extend the legs, take the arms out. And I think most of us know our favorite way to do um, Shavasana or the way that we feel most comfortable. Dan, don't try to get out of here. Perfect. Any way you want to take Shavasana. You can cover your body with a blanket if that's something that, that you like to do. You can tie your feet with the strap so that they don't turn out. That's something you like to do. Palms up, arms out away from your side body. And with the next exhalation, close your eyes. And once you close your eyes, begin to deepen the weight of the entire body. And so every muscle and every bone in your body will become very heavy. All of your internal organs begin to descend or move towards the mat. The brain can also move away from the front of your skull and begin to deepen its weight towards the mat. The same can go for the heart. The heart can begin to move towards the mat. And those places that are a little bit hard to become passive at, like the throat, the abdominals, these spaces intentionally let go.
begin to slowly deepen your breath and move your awareness back into the room. Small movements in the fingers and in the toes when you're ready. Bend the elbows, bring the hands to the belly or to the heart. Keep the eyelids closed. Continue with this heaviness of the body. Stretch the arms up and over the head for full body stretch. You want to draw the abdominals towards your mat as you reach into your fingertips. With an exhalation, release your arms back down to your side body and once more just rest there for a moment. Bend the knees one at a time. Bring your feet onto your yoga mat or the wall or the floor. Bring the knees into the heart one at a time and wrap your arms around your knees. Keep that length in your lower back. Move side to side if that's good for you. And then roll onto your right and hold in a fetal position and you can use your right hand or arm to support your head. Come seated, any seated position that you would like. Again, try to come seated with the eyelids heavy and close down. Your hands can come to your heart, thumbs can come to your third eye, or you can just keep your hands resting at the top of your legs. Asana and pranayama are two facets in the field of yoga where knowledge is acquired by asana. Remember that. No one teaches this. Nobody tells you. Asana is not a physical exercise that is commonly said. Asana develops intelligence in each individual to become more powerful in their understanding. And asana helps you to develop that quality. Thank you guys so very, very much for being here. Namaste.